Hello, Professor Pite. Hello. Um, How are you? How are you? May I uh, ask you to introduce yourself uh, shortly? Yeah, shortly. I'm Professor Didier Pite. I'm the director of the Infection Control Program at the University of Geneva Hospitals. And I'm also the director of the WHO Collaborating Center for Patient Safety. Uh, I have been the one to introduce uh, alcohol-based hand rub uh, during pa patient care all over the world using a WHO formulation, a formulation that we developed and delivered patent-free to the World Health Organization. This uh, alcohol-based hand rub is now actually a standard of patient care in hospitals and has been given to WHO patent-free so that then it can be produced locally at very, very low cost. Okay. Uh, so this is like this kind of uh, hand rub uh, we are all using? Yeah. Um, this is this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any one of those. <laughs> So can you, can you tell it how it changes like the life of people uh, as it is patent-free versus it would be like a commercial project that uh, only a few people can, can produce? Yeah, the idea originally was to make it patent-free to make sure that all over the world it could be used, in, including in resource-poor countries. Nowadays, with the COVID-19 pandemic situation, it's clear that it is also valid for all over the world production, local production. So you have local production everywhere in the world because, in fact, you have a lack of stock of these material and because it was used mostly for hospitals, but now it's used also in the community. So the advantage of having it patent-free is that everybody can produce it. I, I don't want to say in your kitchen, but almost. So every pharmacy department can, can produce it. Uh, we have seen uh, perfume industry companies that actually switched their production of uh, perfume to produce alcohol-based hand rub at very low cost or even alcohol-based hand rub that had, we, had been donated so that we can use it uh, all over the place and all over the world. Excellent. Um, so the impact usually uh, estimated in hospitals today is that this solution together with the way to use it is associated with uh, 18... 8 million lives saved every year in the world. So that's a, a real impact. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Um, like I, to, to, this, this weekend, like with the European uh, hackathon, EU yeah. versus virus, we have about uh, 20,000 people uh, collaborating. And uh, we now have over 2,000 projects uh, ongoing. Uh, yeah. If I take an example, we have 20 projects of ventilator, ventilation yes. machines. Uh, yes. And but there are also like already 80 open source projects that everyone could reuse. Unfortunately, they are not yet uh, like uh, validated. They are not accessible to the people in the in the field. Would you have a proposal or a recommendation to help yeah. like have more impact yeah. uh, during this event? First of all, it's a great success because 20,000 people is uh, twice the, the the target that was initially anticipated of 10,000. So it's very good. To have many, many projects is very good at the beginning. But then people have to stay together and team. They have to team themselves so that we produce projects that are very, very meaningful. So you say there are too many projects, speaking of the building of ventilators. They should work together and put their energy and their collective intelligence together to actually produce only one ventilator, but a ventilator that would be as inexpensive as possible so that you can make it affordable all over the world and also that is easy to prepare, easy to, to make and ideally with pieces of materials that you can find everywhere. So I think that the better sit together, team up and to say that the main goal of this hackathon is actually to save lives and not to produce as many projects as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, like this is a goal, I think, from the UN uh, to achieve health for all. So maybe if we if we bring this uh, this team together, we could uh, help uh, reach that goal uh, and and show that in in Europe. Yeah, this is very key because there there are hospitals who have ventilators and they will have enough ventilators, but there are many others who certainly miss ventilators. But we what we need is really to concentrate all the energy and team up in order to really produce uh, a one, ideally one ventilator that will meet 
all the requests. Uh, and that's very important because when you say one ventilator, you say one connection, you say one of these, one of that, and not so many. The problem that we have in healthcare today is that there are, the material is coming from so many places is that you are then linked to one material, to one byproduct, or to one product to make this one material use. So this hackathon should really work at concentrating the model onto what is the main target, which is let's get one and save life with a very innovative or very useful way and very inexpensive way to produce material ID, or innovation strategy, or behavioral change uh, sort of methods. Yeah. Uh, maybe beyond ventilators, uh, what, what do you see as key elements like as, as we will start to go uh, back to the streets? What are the key things we, we should also develop for health? Yeah, well, ventilators are only for the very, very sick patients. They are very important, but they are not the only thing at, at all to save lives. Of course, the, the first thing is methods so that people uh, could sort of understand the idea of social distancing. Very important. Promotion of hand hygiene, whether it's using uh, soap and water hand washing or this alcohol-based hand rub uh, sort of that we can use. So the question is not to produce a, an alcohol-based hand rub because it's available, we, we made it, but to make it accessible everywhere, not only in every resource uh, situation, but also when you are coming on the bus. When you are climbing the bus or the, the, the public transportation, you need to find it. You need to make sure people will not steal it. You need this product to be sort of used all the time at the appropriate time by using appropriate campaigns. And all of this is extremely important. Then you need to develop strategy for people to, when they get sick, immediately go and seek actually to be tested. Because the, the way we will prevent the current situation of the first wave and the way we will prevent the second wave to be so uh, too, too important, you know that second wave is the case in Singapore, in China, in, in different places, so it would be that people should understand the need to go and be tested at the most appropriate place and also develop tools that could make the testing as short as possible and as reliable as possible and also that all the material to test would be available universally all over the world. Thank you. Maybe one last question, as we, we have the chance to have the world specialist for uh, hand safety. Uh, can you show us how we should like um, uh, use the hand rub? Sure. I have my hand rub here. So what you can do is you take a palm full of other product. So your palm is full of product. Yeah. Then you we, we have to, uh, you have to go up a bit, yeah, thank you. Palm to palm, then finger interlaced like this, finger interlaced, then you rub with rotational movement, then you go around your thumb, 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 fingertips, fingertips on both sides, and after 20 to 30 seconds when your hands are actually dry, they are clean and ready to go to the next step. Remember that if you have to use a mask, you need to clean your hands before wearing your mask and wear your mask in the right position. So it means you take your mask, put it below your eye, then you can see I tidied it, tied it here, and then press the mask very well on your face. And then of course you do whatever you have to do, whether you have to wear a mask or not. Then when you remove your mask, you be careful to remove your mask Put it away or keep it in some circumstances. You can keep it for a few hours and reuse it. And after that, again, you need to rub your hands. So again, palm full of the product, then palm to palm. And then, of course, interdigital, interdigital, then rotational rubbing, then the thumb, one side, the other side, and then the fingertips, fingertips, and then when hands are dry, they are clean. Thank Very you. important because when you wear a mask, your hands are going to your face, and you are touching your face and your nose and your mouth, and that's the way you got the virus to get to your mucosa and get to infect you. Yes. Is it the same with, with soap, like the process? 
Same process, you use the same action, it takes a longer time because of course you need to apply the soap for at least 30 seconds for the soap to be efficient and then you need to first have water on your hands, then rinse your hands, then dry your hands and then you are ready. So it takes usually at least one minute to do it, if not more, but it works as well. Okay, thank you very much. My pleasure and I wish everyone participating to the hackathon all the best until tomorrow. Tomorrow evening we'll have beautiful project, I'm pretty sure. Thank you, Professor Peter. Thank you. My pleasure.